So we're uh, in London again today. I had a big day planned full of exciting things. Maybe not fun things, but definitely some exciting things. But some things have kind of it killed my fun, I guess, in that uh, I don't think they're going to happen today, but they'll definitely happen tomorrow or the next day or something like that. So stay tuned for fun, I promise you. As for today, I, I have no idea what's happening, to be honest. I'm heading to the YouTube space right now, and uh, yeah, we'll carry on from there. We're at St. Pancreas. <laughs> St. Pancreas, which I can never call anything but St. Pancreas. I absolutely love the undergrounds in London and the station names are great. Cockfosters, fantastic, although quite obviously funny. My favorite, Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> also, Tooting Station, fantastic. Um, we're here because we're heading to the YouTube space to do a little bit of work. You might remember, in Japan, I went to the YouTube space I filmed these business videos, and the plan was to get them out to you guys, but it never happened because I've been so busy running around. So I'm going to the YouTube space here to film them. Not to film them, to edit them, and hopefully have some of these business videos ready for you fairly soon. So I'm gonna try not to run into people and head into YouTube. So I'm here in the YouTube space in London and it's amazing. I feel so privileged and so grateful to be able to come and work on it, like in a space like this and have massive dual monitors to work on. It's pretty fun. I, 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 I gotta say though, as I say, I, I, I a lot. I, I, I feel like I, I, not like I don't belong, but maybe like I live in a bit of a dream, a fantasy, and that somebody's just gonna snap and wake me up one day because it's too good to be true. And I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of the imposter syndrome, I think it might be called, but the imposter syndrome is this kind of belief or this fear that sometimes people live who have really good lives or have had really lucky lives that it's too good to be true and that they don't belong and they're an imposter in their own skin and at some point, at some time, somebody's gonna come to them and drag them away from the life realizing that they're a fraud. When I started my travels, I had definitely, I definitely had the imposter syndrome. I definitely felt, I didn't, I felt like a fraud. I'm gonna be honest, I felt like a fraud when I started and I felt like my life was too good to be true and that at some point somebody was gonna wake me up and it was all gonna be a dream. I think over the years, all the hard work I've put in makes me kind of appreciate myself, if that makes sense, and it removed that imposter syndrome from me. I don't maybe feel like I deserve the life I have, but I at least feel like I've put in the work to the point that it makes sense. I guess is the best way to put it. I don't think anybody deserves a life as good as I have it. Or I believe everybody deserves a life as good as I have it. But I think, like I said, I've kind of gotten over this imposter syndrome just because I've been working so hard and I do feel like I value myself and I'm proud of myself and I think that's a really important thing. And, um, there are times though that I just don't feel like I belong. Like when I walk into the YouTube space in London, I don't, I did, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm working at YouTube. It, yeah, like, I, it just boggles my mind. So um, I wanted to not talk about that. I wanted to talk about two things quick. I wanted to talk about first camera gear because the plan on today's episode wasn't to sit here and film in here. The plan was to go on a shopping spree because I'm about to go on a huge shopping spree for camera gear. And I still haven't fully decided what I'm gonna do, but I think what I'm gonna do is buy some new lenses. Uh, I kinda wanna backtrack, I guess, to the th thought-making, um, I guess, scenario of how I'm going to buy the next set of lenses and what I'm gonna buy and why I'm gonna buy them. So let me talk about that quick. 
I started a business a, a couple months ago, five months ago, six months ago, something like that. And I've been slowly transferring everything into my business just because it makes more sense from a liability, from an insurance standpoint, and from a business standpoint. But all my camera gear is personal. All the camera gear I own, I paid for. It's my personal gear that I use for business. And that just doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. So I've been trying to think, how can I shift my gear into my business? How can I make my gear my business? Sis gear. <laughs> um, and I thought to myself, why don't I just sell all my gear? And honestly, Two days ago, I was this close to selling every single piece of my equipment, all my lenses, all my camera gear, and just being like, okay, I'm starting fresh, I'm at zero. Taking all the money back, putting that in my personal account, and then just buying all new gear on the business credit cards. And to be honest, I almost, like I said, I was this close to doing it, and I almost switched to Sony. And don't tell Ken and I said that, but literally I thought, if I had no gear left, what would I want? What would I buy? And the answer was the Sony gear. And a lot of that comes down to seeing the guys shooting the A7R3 in Patagonia and how good the files came out from that, how much shadow recovery came from that. It almost took me over to the Sony side. And I was really close to doing it until I came to the realization that I could just sell my personal camera gear to my business as a used product, and that would just be so much easier and cheaper. Basically what I've done is I've sold my 5D Mark IV and my 16 to 35 to my business. So I no longer own them as a person, my business now owns them. And then, with the business credit cards, I'm gonna be doing some lens shopping because my 70 to 200's dying. Like, the element is kind of loose. It could probably be fixed, but it is seven, eight years old. So I'm gonna give that away to somebody. I've been going through Twitter and seeing if I can find somebody to give it away to. My 50 millimeter, um, I didn't show it or film it, but in Texas, it completely crapped out. It's done, it's toast, it's not even with me anymore. So I need to find a way to get more length in my lenses. I now only have 14 millimeters and 16 to 35. I have nothing telephoto. And back in the day, I reviewed for Canon the 100 to 400 millimeter version too, and I absolutely loved that lens. I loved it. I had it in the Galapagos, and if you wanna see the video of me reviewing it back in the day on a GoPro Hero 2, it's not good content, but it will show you the lens, and the lens is amazing. I fell in love with that lens back then. I loved how close I could get to my subject. I loved the wildlife opportunities. I loved how sharp it was. It was just such a good lens that I've always been saying I want to buy it again. So with the 70 to 200 soon to be gone, I'm going to buy the 100 to 400. But now I have to fill that gap from 35 to 100. So I'm doing something I've never ever done before and I'm buying a standard zoom lens. I'm going to buy the 24 to 70 millimeter and I've never ever ever I've never liked shooting anything between 35 and basically 70. It's like this, I rarely shoot it, but I think it will be important to have a, have a stop gap between 35 and 100. So I'm gonna do the 24 to 70 just because I think it's a better lens than the 24 to 105. And then I'm also gonna buy a new 50 millimeter, probably the Sigma. So gear, that's the first thing I wanted to talk about on this little bit of a sit down. Um, the second thing is what's happening over here. I just talked about business, about my business as a photographer. And I've been filming in Tokyo, I've filmed these business related videos. This one's about, about mistakes that photographers make in marketing themselves. There's another video on stock photography I filmed. Both of them should be coming out fairly soon, maybe within the next month and a half. But I do wanna film more videos like this because I do think that they're very valuable for you guys. Um, even if they're really time consuming to film and edit, I, I think they're valuable. So I wanna know what you guys want. What do you guys want from a business standpoint? What do you guys want from a, hey, we're sitting down in a room chatting about some topic in photography or business or vlogging or whatever. So in the comments of this video, let me know what kind of videos like this, sitting down in front of the camera with a green screen behind me or no screen or whatever, what kind of videos do you guys want? Beyond the vlogs, there's still gonna be five vlogs a week, maybe even six vlogs a week, but every now and then I wanna interject something that has maybe more of an educational focus. So um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna get back to editing. It's now been 
three hours that I've just been smashing at the editing and it's been really productive, but I needed a break to chat to you guys. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I did. Back to work. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see. So the plan was to work all day at the space and I was hoping that a transfer would come through to my business bank account so I could start spending some money on some camera gear and then it just happened so I couldn't like focus on work anymore. I had the bail and I'm headed towards the camera store but I was smart enough on this little day trip to London to bring my camera batteries and charger. I wasn't smart enough to bring the cable so the battery might run out before I get home. But either way, I'll film as far as I can. <laughs> Okay, it's tomorrow and I've got all my new gear and to be honest, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm gonna actually bring the camera closer. I don't know how I feel about this because I've, I don't know, I've had very simple gear for years and doing a big purchase like this is, yeah, it's crazy. So my bag's new, it's not new, my bag's the same bag, but the setup is different. I'm not gonna do unboxings of every pieces of kit because they're pretty regular kit that everybody has or lots of people have, but this is the setup in the bag now. The bag is totally full. There's no room anywhere in the bag anymore. Um, that's the 100 to 400. The two, 70 to 200, I posted on Twitter asking if somebody wanted it and a lady named Jan Smith, we found out that she was supposed to photograph her sister's wedding and she doesn't have a telephoto lens. So tomorrow I'm gonna go and ship that lens to her. Um, basically the 70 to 200 F2.8 is almost basically the same size as the 100 to 400. So it doesn't really add that much to the bag. Um, and it's a, just a brilliant lens. I'm excited to get that out into the field. That's my old 16 to 35. This is also new. 24 to 70 f 2.8 version 2. I've never liked standard zoom. I like to go really wide or telephoto because I think that standard zoom kind of looks pretty normal to the eye. But at the same time, without having a 70 to 200, I'm sure there's going to be times that I want to get between 50 and 70 millimeters for landscape photos. So that's there. Um, this is the 40 millimeter pancake lens. That's mostly used for video. It's f2.8 as well, 40 millimeters. I do put it on the DSLR and shoot some pictures with it though. I actually really like that lens. And then this is also new, the Sigma 50 millimeter f1.4. The thing I noticed right away about this lens is it's heavy. It's so heavy compared to my old um, Canon 50 millimeter 1.4, um, which I actually hated more than anything in this entire world. I hated that lens so much. Um, but this is massive and I'm having a little bit of buyer's remorse with the 50 millimeter because I do like shooting 50 millimeters. I do like that focal length for street photography and stuff like that. But at the same time, I think that maybe I would probably be more willing or more likely to shoot 85 millimeters. And then it would also be a stopgap between um, 70 millimeters and 100 from these two lenses. So I'm having a bit of buyer's remorse and wondering if I should go and exchange it. But I already threw away all the packaging and everything like that. So I might just stick with it. Um, the one lens I didn't buy that I was this close to buying was a tilt shift lens. I almost bought the 17 millimeter tilt shift lens because I've been finding myself more and more often wanting to tilt shift, especially at that wide angle, to bring the mountains forward and up in my landscape photos or in the cityscapes to straighten up some of the buildings. So I might go lens shopping again before I leave Europe or maybe buy something in South Africa, but uh, I'll have to figure that out later. The other thing is I no longer have room. I could probably fit one more lens in right here, but I have my 14 millimeter Rokinon lens that's going in there. Um, I could maybe squeeze more, one more lens in this bag, but the bag's packed. So I have to be smart with my kit as a travel photographer. So as much as I want a tilt shift lens, it probably just doesn't make practical sense to have one. In total, I'm happy. And I'm, I feel really, really lucky that I've been able to, um, to buy stuff. 
and that the business is going well. I think one of the videos I'm gonna do at some point, the sit down videos, is just talk about the pros and cons of incorporating a business as a photographer. Because it's been a process, it was, it's been a lot of work, it's been really difficult, and it's been a lot of learning going on. And um, yeah, I think I wanna talk about having a photography business versus being a sole proprietor photographer and what the advantages are and when you should do it and all that stuff. So maybe look for that video. Also look for the videos that I filmed in the YouTube space in Tokyo fairly soon, hopefully within a month, um, as things start to slow down with the travel a little bit. Sorry there's been a lot of talking today, but that's it for today's video. It's been fun. It was fun at the YouTube space. It's been fun to buy new gear, and I'm looking forward to taking this gear out in the field, and that should be happening really soon. I'll see you guys there. Peace.